What the? See the plumes of smoke behind me. That is where the explosion took place in what the Lebanese authorities are saying was a fireworks factory. Following the explosion in the Beirut city, a display case in the American University of Beirut Archaeological Museum collapsed onto the floor and 72 glass vessels were shattered into pieces. They were the first complete examples of early glass blowing technology uh, during the Roman times in Lebanon. One positive thing that came out of the terrible damage that these objects went through is that when these eight vessels came to the British Museum, uh, we had the opportunity to work with our scientific research team to look at the individual fragments and do some research into them to be able to understand information about how the glass was made, what type of materials uh, were used and where they came from, and also where these uh, important objects were produced. The eight glass vessels that were sent here for conservation work arrived here in tiny fragments. This was ideal for our type of work because the edges of the fragments were clean breaks and this represents the glass within the object. With ancient glass vessels they deteriorate over time and so the actual surface has lost some of the elements that are in its makeup. So when you have a broken edge you can see inside and see the fresh glass and when you analyse it, you get an idea of what it was like when it was actually first made. I've been using X-ray fluorescence and scanning electron microscopy to look at the ingredients used to make the glass. And my colleague Joanne Dyer has used Raman spectroscopy to look at the surface of the glass to try and identify where there might have been pigments or painting on the glass. We've then analysed the glass for trace element levels. And these can then start to tell us about the ingredients used to make the glass and where they might have come from. So you can look specifically for the sand sources that we use or the natron sources or the plant ashes to try and really pin the glass down to specific areas or even sites where it was produced. It's very important to build up a better picture of the history of that area because you can start to tell about who was trading with who and who who was friends with who and the movement of people and technologies throughout the region and it's a much wider picture because the glass was produced on the eastern Mediterranean coast but it finds its way as far north as Scotland and as far east as Central Asia and so this one region was of very significant importance throughout the whole of Eurasia. It is not impossible to restore shattered glass, but of course it is very, very challenging and it needs full attention. We have the eight uh, objects here and they were the most reconstructable, most conservable vessels. We don't use superglue to uh, adhere the glass fragments together, uh, but we use a specifically tested adhesive in conservation. Uh, called Paraloid B72. It is a conscious decision uh, to actually not to hide the scars, not to hide the, uh, hide the broken joints uh, on these glass vessels. Firstly, it is extremely difficult to um, hide the joints, but we want to display the scars, we want people to look at them, absorb them, and feel what these objects went through. These scars um, are the evidence of what cultural heritage preservation, conservation can do uh, during the difficult times that countries can go through. <laughs>